They told us two specific ways. Megan gives me one way. Okay, what we want to learn. That's one way. And what's our next way? There's a second way that animals are classified. Bella, what's the second way? Well, yes, they're class animals are classified in groups. We know that. Okay. And what's the third way? Oh, I guess we'll use that as one way. Gretchen, what's the third way? How they look, exactly. Do all animals look the same, guys? No, not at all. Do we look the same? No, no not at all. Okay? Not at all. Alex has blonde hair. Zach doesn't have blonde hair. So we could even classify because we technically are um, divided by man, my, by animals as well. We could classify ourselves by hair colors. We could also, how else could we classify us as a class? Owen? Our eye color. How else could we do that? Kaylee? By our height. Why? Skin color. Lacey? Okay, we can classify ourselves by something that we don't have control over, like what color shoes. If you're wearing gym shoes or regular shoes. Madison. Sure, yes, by what we're wearing. How else? How long your hair is. How about how many of you are left-handed? How many of you are right-handed? There you go, we just classified the class. Majority of us are right-handed. Jacob is left-handed. Okay? So we can classify, just like animals, we can classify many different ways. Okay? Continue, our, continue for another way, guys. Another way would be how they look. Okay? By their body features. We did that here, too. How many of you wear glasses? How many of you don't wear glasses? How many of you have brown eyes? How many of you have blue eyes? We could classify by body features all day. Okay? All right. Set so the features of cats. Okay? So a trait, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, something that is past a feature. That is cat. So from here, here, you know what my trait is that I got from my parents? Shrimpy. I'm short. You know why I'm short? Because they're short. Yep. And just get over it. Just let it go. But if my parents were tall, this is trying to parents were tall, she's tall. No. Okay. So in addition to being classified in different groups, what we want to learn about them and their body features. Guys, what were two additional ways that we can classify animals? They just told us that. What's one way that we can also classify animals? Maddie. Right. Four. Number four is where they live. We can classify animals that are in warmer climates, and we can classify animals that are in colder climates. Would you expect a polar bear and a giraffe to be in the same, to be classified in the same group? No, because they live in two different places. That poor polar bear, if he lived in Africa, would die. He would die of heat exhaustion because he's got his body is made for the cold weather. And
And that poor giraffe, if we stuck that poor giraffe in uh, the North Pole, it would freeze. Its skin and its fur is so thin because of where it lives. So we can classify them by where they live. Even where, how else can we classify them? How they act. Exactly. Do you think that we could characterize or classify our classroom into how we act? Yeah, we could. Those of you that are um, a little more silly and willing to show me your dance moves and have some fun. And then those of you that don't want to embarrass yourself, and that's totally fine. That's that's another way for us to categorize ourselves or classify ourselves. Okay? Another very important thing for us to remember. Animals can belong to different groups. Or different, or many different groups. Animals can belong to many groups. Depending on their characteristics. That is very important. So our example for that is a hawk can be in both a group that that of animals that eat mice and a group that flies. Okay. So that is how we can classify animals like that. All right. For our for our purposes here in our classroom, we are going to talk about two different groups. And you may be very familiar with these two groups. And the first group that we are, well, the two groups that we're going to talk about, that we classify animals, or scientists classify animals into, are first vertebrates. And the second group is invertebrates. Okay. Without reading further, anybody have any clue what these mean? Who knows? Why? Exactly. <laughs> Animals with backbones. <laughs> So if a vertebrate is an animal with a backbone, what do you suppose an invertebrate is, Ms. Lacey? Absolutely. They are animals without a backbone. Okay, so. Can anybody give me an example of an animal with a backbone? Jake, can you think of an animal with a backbone? Uh, a giraffe. Okay. Can you think of an animal without a backbone, Jason? Uh, no. A fish actually has a backbone. That a snake does not have a backbone. Owen? A worm does not have a backbone. How would you classify us, ladies and gentlemen? Would we be classified as vertebrates or invertebrates? Adam, what do you think? Vertebrates. Okay. Feel right along here. Bend over just a bit. You feel that spiny thing? That's your spine. That is what makes it. That's your backbone. Okay. That's what makes us humans. Vertebrates. What do we know about, about vertebrates, guys? They just told us. What do we know that we need to remember? Angel, what is it? Okay. A vertebrate is an animal with a backbone. And what else? Not only 
definitely doesn't have a backbone, but what else does it have, Sophie? And other bones. <coughs> All right, here's very, another very important thing. What do these other bones do, guys? Or what do the bones do? What's the, what is the purpose of bones, Gretchen? Right, bones help support Give your body a structure and help support it. So bones help support. Help support the body and give it a structure. Okay, what else did we find out about bones? What do bones do? It says right in that paragraph. How do they grow? Megan, how do they grow? Yeah, bones will grow with an animal. Think about it, guys. If my bone did not grow with me, how tall would I be? Adam? I would be as big as I was when I was born, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay? So, your bones grow with you. Okay? It's really cool because God made us in such a way that your bones have what's called a growth plate on the ends of them, okay? So I have, you have this big bone in the top part of your leg, it's called your femur, okay? This is your strongest bone in your body. It's a very hard bone to break, okay? But on the end here, where it connects to your knee and where it connects to your hip, there's something that's called a growth plate. And that's exactly what it is. It allows that bone to get taller and longer as you grow. Your bones will continue to grow for several years. That's how you become taller. I did not start off when I was born at five foot nine inches. I did it. I grew that way. I was your size once. I was shorter. Okay? My girl. My girls check their height all the time, just like I'm sure you guys do too. You might have one of those little road chart things, and you check every so often how tall you're getting. You go to the doctor's office, and they check to see how tall you're getting. Okay? You're growing. When you're growing, your bones are growing. That's what's making it work. Okay? So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about some animals now that are vertebrates. Okay. There are five of them listed, and we're going to go through each group on page 141. Let's look at that. Let's talk a little bit about fish. Let's get the fish out of the way. Fish is one group of vertebrates, and what did we learn about fish? They are what? Yeah, they are full-blooded. Full blooded, and we said that full blooded means that they cannot regulate their own body temperature. Okay, what else did we learn about fish? Madison Post? Okay, they have slippery scales. Gretchen, what else? They lay eggs. Connor, what else? Breathe through their gills. They breathe through their gills. How do we breathe? What do we have? Why? We have lungs. Fish 
have zero. So they agree. Zero. Okay, what else? One more thing we're missing, the most obvious thing of it all. Kaylee? Reptiles 
way to give me an example of a reptile. Snakes, lizards, turtles. What else? Crocodiles. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our bird category. Let's go back through now. We just read about it. Let's talk about birds. There's some very important stuff here. Maddie, give me one characteristic of a bird. They are. This is our first type of animal that actually is a warm-blooded animal. Which means what? Who remembers? What does a warm-blooded animal do? Zach? Yes. They can control their body temperature. Okay, what else do we, do we know about birds? Maddie and Hope? Okay, they have wings and light bones. I have a question. Do you think you can fly? No. Birds' bones, ladies and gentlemen, are all are hollow. That's what makes them so light. Your bones are not. If you were to ever look, and I will see if I can get a picture to show you. Our bones are full, solid, all the way through. Birds' bones are not. That's what makes them much lighter. In order for them to be able to fly, they need to have a light skeleton. Okay? Imagine if you had wings and had to lift your body off the ground. It would be very difficult and very tiresome. Okay? So, their bones need to be light, and they actually are hollow on the inside. Okay, what else do we know about birds? Oh, and what else? They all hatch from eggs. Okay, what else? Anything else that we're missing? Connor? Colors help birds stay warm. Better keep them warm. Why am I missing anything? Pardon? They do have feathers and bills. Okay. What else from our book? Anything, Eva? Yes, they have lungs. Okay. All right. I think that's our birds in a nutshell. Let's look. Our last one is mammals. That's a very important thing. Okay, so let's talk about mammals now. Tell me about them. We just read a short little paragraph. Tell me some very important things that we need to know about mammals, Alex. They are, Alex. Nice job. They're warm blooded. What else do we know about mammals? Aiden? Yeah, they're born alive. All right. Born alive. How many of you hatched from an egg? Eva, you did not. I did. I did. I did. I did. None of you hatched from an egg or you would not be here. Okay? Live birds, okay? That's what that means. Your mom did not have an egg and take her, her and your dad didn't take turns sitting on an egg. Okay, honey, it's your turn. I'm going shopping. I'll watch the egg today. Oh, no, that doesn't happen. Silly. Okay, so that's very, very important because that's what makes mammals very different from other animals. 
Adam, give me another characteristic of a mammal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have hair. Okay. Do you have hair? Yeah. You do have hair. Even if Mr. Brynan, Mr. Brynan will shave his head. Okay. Very, very short. He still has hair. Okay. All right, so most mammals have hair. What else do we know about mammals, wise? They breathe lungs. Okay? You do not have gills. If you did have gills, we would have to have a special tank for you to be in so that you could breathe and still pay attention. That doesn't happen. So every single one of you has two lungs, a left lung and a right lung. They do an amazing job of keeping you breathing. Am I missing anything else, Megan? Yeah, they feed wolf to their tongue. When my girls were when my girls were little, and when you were little, that's what you had. That's what you had in order for you to get the nutrition you needed. You weren't born, and then your mom immediately started giving you steak. That doesn't happen. Okay? It takes several months to a year before you actually start eating solid food. Okay? That's the same thing that happens with baby mammals. Okay? Other animals as well. Dogs and cats the same way. Zach, am I missing anything else? Yep, that's what we're talking about. Aiden, am I missing anything else? Okay, you will have to wait. All right, am I missing anything, Daddy? Did we scroll back? Yeah, yeah. They're warm blooded, they're born alive, they have hair, and they have lungs, and they feed milk to their young. Okay, these are most of the animals that we are familiar with.